episode six of Shack Out Back. It's Jim. And the other one is, what's your name? We're back in the new year. I'm Danny. It's 2021 now. Yes, we have we have survived the quote unquote shittest year ever. And yeah, we're back, hopefully. We're on to the next shittest year ever. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why everyone thought it would just kind of go away. Stop, I think it'll yeah. be like the end of the year before it really starts to go back to normal. What are we doing this week, Dan? I'm getting my little list out, my little list of stuff. So this is kind of our first podcast in the new year, but it's going to be a wrap up of last, last year. year. Yeah, very so, topical. <laughs> topical, yeah. So it's kind of going to be talking about all the games we played last year, and specifically just some of the best ones we want to mention. So I, I'm pretty excited. They don't have to be released last year, right? No, God, because I no, would have I, no games no. to talk about. I think. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I talk yeah. about like the re-release of fucking Persona. <laughs> And uh, The Last of Us 2, and that'd be it. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I'm looking at my list that I kind of wrote up, and no, some of the, lots of the games that I'm talking about are not from last year. I don't even know what released last year that I really played. Well, why don't we start the show like we always do with what we've been doing the last week. So what have you been up to, Dan, the last yeah, week Yeah, we, so, we need to make recordings. a little, uh, we need to make a lit, like a little uh, title card sequence of what this is called, the bi-weekly breakdown. Is that the bi-weekly name? breakdown. We could have a cool, cool music sting that comes in and a cool little intro. I'll look through more, like, 90s FPS fucking <laughs> jank chiptune music to find something. Okay, bi-weekly breakdown, number six or whatever. Uh, you you start. I always start. What have you done in the last two weeks? I've been playing a lot of uh, a game I'm going to talk about recently, like, <laughs> the last few weeks. I've put, like, yeah. 45 hours in there doing that a lot. <laughs> Honestly, I've been trying to take a break from video game stuff, so yeah, I've been... I've been reading... I've been catching up on the uh, How to Survive Camping stories lately. Yeah. Uh, I've been watching a lot of movies ever since we watched The Lighthouse. I've been watching, like, 80s action movies I told you about, like Lethal Weapon and stuff. Twin um, Sanity, yeah, yeah. Twin Sanity. Yeah, that's what we watched together is that fucking Netflix film, Twin Sanity. Another another gem from the depths <laughs> of Netflix. <laughs> What was the what, what was that one about, Dan? Explain to me what Twin Sanity was about. Twin Sanity, if I remember, it was about two yoga instructors who were identical twins who one the of them stoutest, went insane. The stoutest women I've ever seen. Not like not big women or whatever, but they were very wide. If there was ever like fantasy dwarves and they had like Jesus camera tricks to make them short, Christ. they played them very well. Uh, nothing really happened. Long story short, nothing in the movie happened. It opened up and there, it felt like we were already an hour into a movie that they didn't record. <laughs> and then it just kind of ended. And yeah, there's, I can't really remember anything about it. And it was like three days ago or something. How does that one rate against, uh, what's it called? Um, Deadly Detention? Yeah. Deadly Detention was way goddamn better. Oh, I think, you, seriously? I think, yeah. Yeah, I think at the end of Deadly Detention, they knew they were they were fucked. They were like, we need, <laughs> we need to release a movie, and the studio didn't want swearing or anything, so just re- re-record lines and re-dub it over and just get it out. Yeah, Twin Sandy seemed to me like a vanity project for those yeah. <laughs> women who were in it, and as a result, it was almost borderline nonsensical it yeah was it was just like i didn't know what was going on at any <laughs> no point. it was garbage absolute trash is, um, this, is that to, all you've been up to i'm trying to think of what else so uh, i want to talk about this i, I think no say what you're gonna say first say, what have you been up to uh i finished animal farm by george orwell not a long oh how was that only. did you like i it? liked it i liked it a lot i didn't like it as much as 1984 but 1984 is way longer and everything too so different type of book but very good book nonetheless uh video traditional games i've kind of not been playing many of i've only been playing luigi's mansion 3 which is fantastic it's way better than the game. ds1 on. yeah yeah but like uh vr games that's the only thing i've been kind of playing in the last two weeks like I, i've been actually looking up stuff about like the different vr headsets um, yeah you, you got walking dead saints and sinners right how are you yeah. liking that, that looks i i haven't even tried any of those things i kind of like to limit myself to one or two games at once so i can play through them and enjoy them and stuff and i don't mm. get a bunch of games on the go so right now i'm doing luigi's mansion 3 and i've beat saber is just one of those things just like a roguelite you can kind of always have it installed and just play it a bunch yeah so i've been playing a lot of beat saber and then i just started an actual story driven game i bought jurassic world aftermath on the quest 2 which came out really really recently is that the spooky one you're going to show cast and freak yeah that's that's the alien isolation-esque jurassic world it's very good so far okay um anything else you've been doing the last two weeks i mean that's about it obviously it was uh new year's it was christmas yeah so all that stuff happened my birthday's on january 1st so i'm yeah I'm one we kind of done your day. birthday you spilt sour beer all over yourself and we kind of done your birthday yeah yeah that was that was interesting <laughs> <laughs> 
that's about it though it's been kind of kind of nice just hanging out at home okay so we don't have to talk about this very long but i i know we were talking about the episode before last and for some reason we didn't talk about it last episode but cyberpunk 2077 dan yes it uh, came out uh i just want to say that to me looking after watching a few editorials and stuff yeah it is just the same as bioshock 3 they fucking just <laughs> lied in their trailers they lied dan yeah they had travesty a, a, a ton of stuff in the trailers that just did not end up in the game I, I was talking to Cass a little bit ago and she's not huge into video games or anything but she she's all, everyone's heard about cyberpunk I, I think my parents mentioned they heard something about a game that came out that was like really bad they, my mom mentioned Red Dead Redemption 2 when it came out really weirdly. It's huge games that my parents will hear about, oddly enough. Yeah, because they run TV ads for them. Yeah. So Cassie kind of knew knows about Cyberpunk anyways, but I was talking to her and I forgot all these trailers that came out two and three years ago mm-hmm. that showed that showed gameplay mechanics that were completely scrapped and removed. There was like, there was like wall climbing yeah, that, and yeah, like there was, a yeah. ton of shit, yeah. And it's like, the game came out, and it's like, this isn't even, I don't, this isn't the game that I want to play anymore. This is nothing to me now. Like, I was excited for that game that doesn't exist and never did exist. The, the biggest travesty to me is that, like, my favorite game is New Vegas. So I was yeah. I was expecting, like, they're good at telling stories, CD Projekt Red. So I was expecting, like, a New Vegas that, like, okay, it's a little bit buggy, that's fine. Yeah. But I was just looking at all these editorials about the story, and it just seems like, just like i know there's good side stories and stuff that people keep talking about but it just seems like a huge fucking mess too it just seems like they were throwing shit at the wall and none of it stuck and they just shoved it out the door terrible i mean when we say i i I don't think i will ever support cd project red again it's absolutely fucked what they did like oh yeah i'm not gonna be excited for any same thing with bethesda too i'm not gonna be excited for any of their games that come out i'm gonna be like very 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 cautious about them before i buy them it's it's like when i say fuck cd project red i'm not saying that to the developers or the the actual people that make the games the people who slaved for 90 hours a week to put out a subpar product because their their bosses or whatever want them to those people i i have nothing but respect and adoration for all the people in the higher ups at cd project Red can go fuck a duck yeah the corporate mouthpieces and the people that kept on saying uh no this will happen this will happen we won't crunch and then just didn't tell the media public when they crunch they're just absolute liars yeah and and like that is true like i know there's all this discourse in in gaming because everyone who likes games fucking 14 years old but (laughs) they are liars Tr- yeah. like con artists and liars yeah terrible yeah i mean there's not much it's it's honestly pure evil that they would do that it's it's scum it's it's a scumbag move there's it's a good way to end 2020 though everyone was really hyped up and then the game came out and, and i remember when shit. i woke up and started seeing reviews and i went oh god no this isn't real it's like getting not good reviews uh yeah awful I, and like i know i linked this when i started this little bit about to bioshock infinite at least bioshock like i don't like bioshock infinite very much but at least it functions oh at yeah least, it like, I, I had a good time with it like they lied in the trailers and stuff and i don't <laughs> think it's a good game and it's not my one of my favorite games i don't like it very much but at least yep. like it's a functioning fucking product that some yeah, people enjoy i i love the people trying to defend the ps4 and xbox th- wow i was gonna say 360 one versions that are nigh unplayable but you've got people that will still defend it and say actually it ran perfectly fine on my system it was playing at between 17 to 20 fps most times and things would pop into existence and i also got save stuck on some missions but other than that it's a good game i swear holy shit and uh, it's I, like I, come on like I, I like this guy a lot i'm not gonna tell you who it is but i follow this guy on twitter and i've liked his work for a long time and i think some of his music ended up in the game or yeah. whatever and he was posting on Twitter like, oh, I'm playing Cyberpunk, and he posted pictures of his character and stuff. I'm like, you know what? Good for you. If you like the game, that's totally fine. And then I, I was looking at I was on Twitter, and I saw him replying in this thread about, like, the save corruption if your save gets too big. <laughs> and he's just like, wait, if your save gets over 8 megabytes, it corrupts? And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's... it's a good way to end 20. That's, that, that is a game that deserved to come out this year. Oh, that is a game that deserved to come out in that state, and I out hope of the way. someone up top gets in trouble. Out of the way, it's done. Um, yeah. 
All right, <laughs> let's get let's on move to the on to the stuff. good the good games yeah. the good games that we played. I, yeah. I so who, you, go, do you want to start? You want me no, to start? No, you go first. You go first. It's your week, so you go first. What what's I I think I've shortened my list down to three. So what's the first game you wanted to talk about? The game you've been playing a lot in twenty twenty and you enjoyed. Yeah, it. so I, I wanted to say I played a I played quite a lot of games this year. I mean, I'm sure everyone did. <laughs> there wasn't too much going on. But some of the biggest games that I've kind of played this year, obviously Hades, officially, finally, 1.0 came out earlier this year. I've played a, almost 100 hours of Hades throughout the year, which is a ton. Some of the biggest ones, not longest, but games that have really stuck with me are Outer Wilds, which is, like, magnificent. That's that's yeah. a game that I'll be thinking about 10 years from now, and I'll go back and replay it. I think that I'll really like it when I play it. I just haven't picked it up You yet. will. I guarantee you'll like this game. It, <laughs> what's I'm, what's I'm not, the... Yeah. Sorry, say what you're going to say. I'm not huge into puzzle games or anything, but this is this is a game that really gives you more the more you put into it. Like, you, you have to really interact with the game's systems and think about how it would work. And some stuff that you do, it's like, oh, that actually works. They intended people to do that. It's very interesting. What's the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay in that? Uh, it, it's a short loop. You have about 15 or 20 minutes in the solar system, and then things reset, essentially. That's not really a spoiler. It happens in 20 minutes. So that's the whole gameplay loop, but it's it's puzzles. There's about maybe six to eight planets, I kind of forget, or, or bodies in the solar system, and they all have little puzzles on them that kind of intertwine into bigger mysteries, and there's a lost civilization and aliens and so, so are you yeah. like uncovering stuff what happens after 20 minutes is the universe is the, the, the like sun explodes explode? so then you reset back yeah <laughs> so you reset back to square one it kind of resets everything and you're back you wake up again and you remember that the universe exploded but no one else does are you trying to avert that or yeah yeah okay yeah it's it's extremely interesting it's not hugely long and it's not a game that you can replay very easily and you have to go into it fully blind but if you're taking away anything from the podcast is to like play some of these games i would say this week yeah i mean outer wilds definitely seems like it would be my jam if i played it it definitely seems like one of those games it sounds almost like majora's mask in a way where yeah you time yeah and uh, the world ends after a certain amount of time and i love and i love majora's mask so yeah, everything is linked to time, basically. Like, some, some planets only have certain things that will happen at certain amount of times, and there's a comet that goes around that gets closer to the sun and warms up and further away and ice is over. It's very interesting. Some parts I didn't love the final puzzle to finish it all off. Even when you know what to do and how to get there, it's convoluted. You kind of have to waste your time a little bit in, the, in a couple of the loops to figure it out. But other than that, it's an amazing game. Like, I, I have no problem recommending that. I think it awesome. came out on Epic Games first, and then I got it on Steam when it came out, though. It hasn't been out for a while now, like a couple years or something? I, I think so. I think it came out... I could be completely wrong, but I think it came out on PS4 first, like last year or something? 2019, maybe? Yeah. The one I wanted to talk about first that you've played, too, is Divinity 2. Yes, I forgot to include that, but yeah, we played Divinity 2 Original Sin. We didn't beat it or anything. No, I think me and you got, like, I think I played it with you, and I played it with my friend Brandon, yeah. and uh, I think me and you got farther. We got, like, 30 hours in or some god-awful yeah, thing. Yeah, we played that a long time, actually. Yeah, it, it, that it, was, a lot. it was one of those games that I got right at the beginning of quarantine, and definitely, yeah. like, and definitely, like, paid for itself and the amount of hours oh, God, yeah. I got out of it. it it's, if, for people who don't know, it's basically, like, um... It's like a top-down RPG thing uh, where there's a lot of choices, a lot of characters. There's a lot of itty-gritty like upgrade stuff. Um, it's, it's kind of like a Dungeons and Dragons esque game where yeah. it's, it's like a fan high fantasy elves and dwarves and shit. Um, and there's some fun elements to it, like elves are cannibals if they eat pieces of people. Yeah, and can, like remember parts of their <laughs> yeah, lives. Yeah, I forgot that. There's fun. There's fun flavor in it. There's fun enemies. Like you're trying to avert like these bug antagonists who are taking over the world because there's a certain power that's going on you're trying to become a god and stuff it's a fun premise and a really fun moment to moment decision making game right like what's your favorite quest we did in that game can you remember any i i i really liked the one that sticks out immediately when i think is that the duck one was it a duck no it was a chicken oh the black the void chicken the, the void chicken the black <laughs> hen or something you had to... What was the premise? You came across... Because you had the ability to talk to animals, yeah, if I Yeah, I came remember. across these chickens, and they were like, Oh, 
uh, we've been we've been attacked by these bugs and they stole our eggs and we had to like go after the bugs who stole their eggs and we found one of the eggs and it turned into a void chicken <laughs> and then we brought it home and the eggs like the chicken sat on the eggs and we came back and hatched and killed all its parents and then we had to like it was following us around for the whole game it was fun yeah and it, to put that into perspective if you didn't have that one skill that let you talk to animals at that, that moment yeah. you, it wouldn't happen it just would not happen because when i went up and talked to them it was like cluck cluck and it just had one of the little speech bubbles and nothing happened yeah and there was a bunch like that if i remember there was like some cows you could talk to that would give you some little information about the house or where they saw a key and stuff yeah and there was a there's a remember all the pigs that were on fire yes i do oh yes i do in the forest there were a bunch of pigs who were perpetually on fire like <laughs> it was like alive, a curse. And they were like oh help us <laughs> i do remember fun. that that's definitely a game we got it on gog originally did you buy it again on steam no i, I it, it has cross play with steam because it's a server based yeah. thing so it doesn't really matter where you buy it yeah uh, i probably wouldn't have bought it off gog now because i'm pissed at cdpr <laughs> but yeah uh, I, I will buy it i'm gonna be completely forward I, I will probably buy it on steam when it goes on sale sometime this year again but not yeah the gog version pissed me off there was some problems we continuously had with oh it. Like, yeah remember that not connecting and not it, loading properly yeah i remember like it, the executable like how you run the game through gog galaxy just stopped yeah and i had to go into the game file and and then like find the executable and that's how i got the game started one day yeah it, 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 it had annoying. some problems but you no know, divinity original sin 2 i think you can get it on sale for like 27 dollars when it's oh, on yeah. sale and it's always on sale I wanted to say to you that uh, I, I kind of caved and I and I bought uh, the alpha. I bought into the alpha of Baldur's Gate three, yes, which is did. made by which is made by the same people, Larian Studio, yes. and it's very rough right now. I was looking <laughs> at a lot of stuff from when they just released it. It's definitely much, much, much improved over the last six months. Yeah, but uh, or three or four months. I think it's only been out, but um, yeah, the the same little care and attention is going into that game, and I and I love it. It's it's so good such yeah a good i, I thought it was interesting when you told me you bought that i was like oh like you bought an early access game like that and it's it's full price right it's 70 yeah, it was bucks, 80, bucks. Whatever, 80 bucks yeah yeah, yeah i mean it, it's gonna be good i'm sure do, do they have a release date for it yet no uh i think what they're doing is they have the first act or so of the game uh, quote unquote done and yeah. as they're working on act two and act three they're working they're finalizing act one as well so they're releasing updates for act one for you to go through as they're working on two and three so i think they're going to finally finish act one and then when they're finished the dev cycle whatever just release all of it at once that's interesting yeah I mean, which is really like the best way to do it because yeah. it, it gives like the people who want to play a lot will just play through act one like 10 times with different characters <laughs> different options and all that stuff and they'll really get into it and, and give lots of feedback too it's awesome yeah yeah i mean they they had a kickstarter for a divinity original sin 2 board game that looked real cool by like larian studios had a lot of actual people working on it from their studios and i went that's really interesting and then it was like 180 dollars for the base game and i said nah, i'm okay actually nah. right now i think that especially crpgs nowadays although they're very good like the stuff that, that has been put out the last few years has been very good it's yep. still very niche like yeah. i wouldn't recommend a, a regular ass person to god you know, no get divinity 2 because oh yes everyone will like it it's, it's on consoles too weirdly enough you can buy yeah, they, it for everything they put a lot of crpgs on consoles too yeah. i know the first time i played pillars of eternity was on my ps4 uh, i don't think that traditional crpgs work very well on console yeah but i think the only one i've played that worked fantabulously was wasteland 2 wasteland 2 on console mm. is fucking good as hell any other thing you want to talk about? What's your next big old game? Well, what's your next game, man? Let's go back and forth here. Mine, what's another one? Definitely, looking at my list, uh, honestly, a Sayonara Wild Hearts, 100%. Oh, did you get that this year? Yeah, that was this year, I think. Oh, maybe. my God. I looked at, yeah, I looked at my Steam uh, purchase history, so I played it this year. I think it was right at the start of, co well, at least start of COVID in Canada when yeah. uh, December-ish late november of 2019 so very start of the year because you could still come over and i remember i still had people play it at my house before oh, everything yeah. the first time I played, 
the only time I played Seven Hour War, Wild Hearts was like I was over at your place and we were yeah. gonna do something. We we're gonna play Dungeons and Dragons or something. And I would just sit in your like gym, play this for forty five minutes, and you'll. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, Dan. So I sat down and I fucking loved that game so much, and I beat it in forty five minutes, and it was so fucking good, man. Yeah. So Seven Hour Wild Hearts is definitely not a game for everyone, but I think everyone should at least experience it. It, it's it has it's just like an interactive music video basically. yeah it, it's an album you're you're spending money on an album you're spending money it's about 20 bucks or so i think it's absolutely worth full price i think i bought it just full price when i heard someone talk about it it's about 45 minutes to an hour long depending on how much you want to replay the songs because you can get perfects and everything but it doesn't really matter you're supposed to play it just sit down and play it all in one go level to level they all connect and it's narrated by queen latifah i believe and, uh, it, uh, yeah. Well, it's basically just like a bunch of songs, and as yeah. they change the songs, the genre of the game you're playing and the visuals change. Yeah. So it, it just constantly keeps you on your toes. It, it's like we talk about this a lot, where we like those condensed, shorter experiences, and I will say that is the epitome of a yeah. great like hour long game. Or I, I, I would shell out twenty bucks for that, sit down and play, and be like, "Fuck yeah, that was awesome! Let me play it three more times." Yeah, I, I think I've played it two or three times easily, and I've tried to get perfect on some of the songs. Some of the stuff is real hard, but yeah, the the loose storyline, I guess, is and it's very loose. I think it's about a woman who experiences a breakup with her girlfriend and tries to reconnect with herself to get more love into her life or something but it, the songs are very good i have the whole album on spotify now i yeah, listen to too. quite a lot yeah uh it's very very good experience get just go get sign our wild hearts i think it's only on pc i could be wrong but i no, think it's no, on, no. It is it on out, consoles? you know what you know what came out first it came out on mobile first on on oh really i yeah, didn't and know then, that and then it was on steam and then it was on playstation and xbox and now it's on switch brother oh that's fantastic so it's on everything yeah go play it on whatever you can you go buy it like immediately and just sit down and play it and you'll be done in an hour even people like even i would say that people who don't particularly are good at games or like games because i'm not very good at games like i have intuition about games and i'm not good at them like even though if i was fucking up some parts i'm like fuck yeah i'll play that part again it's so awesome yeah yeah what's what's uh yeah that's that's my game 100 percent sign our wild hearts i think would probably be my game of the year if i had to give an arbitrary thing sign our wild hearts was crazy good to me uh, my my next one um i wanted to talk about stardew valley my boy yes that's the game you've played a thousand hours in <laughs> i think that between my P playstation 4 and steam now i've probably played like 250 hours of it i think and I, I got this game in 2017 or 2018, and I loved it then, and I loved it during quarantine now because I, I played multiplayer. I played multiplayer with you, which was very fun for a while. Yes. Uh, uh, and I played I, – I literally – like me and my friend Brandon, just talking about Brandon before, we started a farm together, and we've put like 90 hours into it or something. That's Crazy a, Stardew Valley is a game – I believe that's on everything now, isn't it? It's on oh, yeah. literally every, every console, mobile, everything. I was playing it on my PlayStation Vita earlier Oh this my year. god. <laughs> yeah, so it's truly on everything. I don't think they're updating it on Vita anymore, but I, I played it on Vita and I was like, this is fun. <laughs> yeah, it, it's what? I for, How much money? It's only like 20 bucks, isn't it? Uh, 20 bucks when it's not on sale. <laughs> really? I, I yeah. have like a good 80 hours in that game and I really want to get back into it because I was I loved that game I sat down and played it for days and days and days and then something happened and I got busy you and stopped. then I just could never come back to it but I really want I still have it installed and everything so it, it's definitely one of those games where this month or last month I should say towards Christmas the guy the Eric Barrow the guy who made it put out a, the biggest update he's ever made yes so I was playing through that with my friends but we weren't going fast enough through it so I was just like fuck it and I started a whole new farm on 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 the computer <laughs> and then i've just been playing and playing it yeah it's definitely one of those on twitter it's definitely one of those games where you can stop playing it for a while and then come back to it and it's bam it's like riding a bike you just jump back into it yeah it's so good i don't even i haven't even described to people what it is it's basically like um how would you describe stardew Do valley dan it is a definitely at heart it's a farming simulator there's a lot of different aspects about it but it's also almost a life simulator yeah, i don't know I how say. you describe it there's a town you can marry people you can fall in love you can have children you can go to the mines and fight it, you can it's, renovate it's definitely like 
Animal Crossing. Yes. But instead of Animal Crossing having the same time of day as it is in real life, it's like short, like 15 minute days that you run through. Yes, there's se- seasons, th- different things change. You can fish, different. Yeah. Lot, lots of stuff. I'm sure everyone knows what it is. Like, mm-hmm. Stardew Valley is another one of those games that'll, I, I think, go down in history and be one of the past. When did it come out? Multiple years ago now, right? 2016, I think. Yeah, so it, I think, is it not getting just bigger and bigger? Like, mm-hmm. there, yeah, it'll definitely go down as one of our generation's huge games that I don't know when it'll stop being updated. I definitely will say that if I were to make like a top 10 of my favorite video games again, it, I think Stardew Valley would be on it. it 100%. Is, it, it is one of the best games I've ever played. Really. Yeah, I, I we played some good games this year. Thinking about it, like I played some really, really good games this year. But yeah, the mod scene for Stardew Valley is also crazy. I jumped into the mods a lot when I started playing it, like immediately. <laughs> mm-hmm. There's lots of fun ones, and there's lots of like memey ones that are very fun too. Like, yeah, they turn the town drunk into a horse you can ride and stuff. I've seen that mod. Yeah, and lots of that stuff is probably fetish bait. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I I feel like um maybe I I've learned a lot about the Undertale community this year. Like oh when god, it was me big too. way back in in the day. And um, I feel like Stardew Valley is a little bit of the vibes of that, where if you yep. engage with the community, it gets a little weird or whatever. But just playing <laughs> it by itself, it's very good. Hundred uh, percent, yeah. I know. I know you said that Sinai Wild Hearts is one of your favorite games, but did did you have another one you wanted to talk about, Dan? Yeah, yeah. If we, it's only we've only been doing this for twenty seven ish minutes. So. Oh yeah, we, we got lots of time. Yeah. Uh, next for me, I'm kind of looking. I made a huge list and just highlighted some stuff red that were I was expecting to like a lot more than I did. They aren't necessarily bad games at all, but I didn't like them nearly as much as I thought. So I'm gonna talk about those a little bit at the end. But yeah, next I would say this year I got into the Yakuza series. I played Yakuza Zero, Kiwami One, and Kiwami Two. So it's about sixty to eighty hours between those three games I played. Which so so what is like what is the point of Yakuza? Because all I've seen yeah. is like <laughs> dancing mini games and punching <laughs> guys and stuff like that. So explain to me what a Yakuza game is. Yeah, did did I not send you the picture of the tiger getting punched in the face? Yes, I, you did. Yeah, I did. So Yakuza Zero is the prequel, and then Kiwami One and Two, and it moves on. I, Japan's got a few more games than us now because they Bastards. didn't think Western people would like it. But my God, were they wrong? So Yakuza follows the story of two characters, one character more so, and I think it just recently switched to I think his name's Ichiban, and the new one that just came out, like a dragon, Yakuza like a dragon. But it's been following this same character for multiple years because these games came out on the PS2, I believe, originally. And then the main character you play is throughout all these games is Kiryu Kazuma, which is another yeah, lots of stuff. Yakuza character, he had his parent, he was an adopted child into the Yakuza family. The dude that adopted him did a bunch of stuff. It's a huge overarching narrative over many games in many years. Is it is it just like an open world, like, do missions for people kind of game? Yeah, o- open world-ish. So every game takes place mostly in the same place. So the city's real dense, real packed with full of stuff to do. Lots of mini games, lots of side quests. Lots but, of crazy shit. Yeah, lots of lunacy. The game, the narrative dissonance between the cutscenes and the game to game like serious moment action <laughs> the serious yakuza stuff and then you get a mission from a man dressed as a baby yeah yeah you get so you get the mini games you get the side quests such as the erotic guy i forget what his name is mr libido i believe he's around ah. the city in his underwear he's usually outside of strip clubs or uh, <laughs> places like that and he'll tell you how to go all night and he, he's a very interesting character. Yeah, and then Yakuza Kiwami 2, you get the big guy dressed as the baby who makes all of his Yakuza <laughs> members dress as babies and they go to a baby fetish club. So ah, the game amazing. is... Yeah, it's a beat-em-up for the most part. Lots of the Yakuza games are roughly the same. It's a... Not a button masher, because there is a lot of combos you have to get actually good at to play them properly. It's a beat 'em up game with really, really in depth storylines and lots of really fleshed out characters. And I would say that you have to play them in order almost. It was a pretty big undertaking for me to play three games like that all in the same series, but it is very interesting. Like, I can see the people that have played all these games, and these characters are huge. 
you like your variation. You, I know, I've noticed about you that you like playing one type of game and then you'll switch it up and play another type of game, and you're not one to like blast through a series in like a month or something. Yeah, no, not not really. That's the same reason why Metal Gear Solid has always been a huge undertaking for me. I just oh, don't know yeah. where to start, and I don't. Yeah. I have all the games I think except for the newest one, The Phantom Pain, and yes. I've I've gotten through Metal Gear Solid One. And I'm just kind of like mentally preparing myself to go through the other ones now, just because <laughs> they're just such a, an investment to like get into the characters and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I would say you would know if you like Yakuza if you saw some gameplay of it, and you generally would know what it is, and you would know pretty quickly if you do not like Yakuza. It's over the top and it's really extreme, but there's a lot of good characters in it. And they're coming more to the West, so they're more easily acceptable to play and easily playable. Whereas in the past, it was real, real tough. Like, we're missing four or five games here still, but they're all coming Jesus. in the next two years. So, definitely a recommend for Yakuza, then. Oh, the God, yeah. Total. For my next one, I, I, you're going to groan at this one, I think. <laughs> but this is, is more this is more tied towards, like, I just got my first gaming PC this year and what I'm using to record right now. So I, this is the kind of the beginning of the year when I explored. But it's Fallout New Vegas, Dan! Oh, God. Uh, I, I have always been a... F- fan of uh, you know that those videos i was showing you on new year's about the guy who was screaming javi where's the cops yes like that that guy. Guy. so that guy's been making videos about fault new vegas mods for 10 years and i've been watching his Good channel God. like religiously so i finally got my gaming pc and the first thing i did was like okay i'm buying new vegas and i'm modding it <laughs> and let me tell you this year i modded new vegas fallout 4 and skyrim and New Vegas has the best mods, the best community, and the best stories out of all those three games. Yeah. Skyrim, Skyrim's very good, but it's still Skyrim underneath. Like, there's no, there's no way you can change the feel of Skyrim. Like the the crappy combat and the stories that aren't that great and all yeah. that stuff that I don't like about Skyrim. Uh, and Fallout 4, the mods that... Are, most of the mods are like, here's a shiny new gun to shoot people in the face with, and that's it. And that's most of the mods, and they're great, like, great animation work and stuff. But the new, new mods in New Vegas are just so fucking good. There's this whole... Like, I'll tell you some of the big ones. So there's a series called Inheritance, which is this huge, sprawling story about these bounty hunters and stuff and this adventure you go on that takes, like, 50 hours to beat, and it was so fucking good. There's this team called Millennium that made all these realistic weapons. They have, like, 150 remodeled amazing weapons you can just plop into the game and have them spawn in there. Yeah, and that's it's that's crazy to me. So they're full games inside of New Vegas. Oh, yeah, and there's this, uh, there's this huge mod called... Um, beyond boulder dome and it's this really old mod it's like it's like nine or years old or something eight or nine years old and the world space in it is fucking gigantic it's so big and there's so much shit to do in it it's crazy yeah that stuff is insanely impressive to me and if you resonate with a game like that i think it's crazy to jump into it and experience it and it's stuff you won't be able to experience in any other game no and it's such like a, a fucking sp- it spoils me so much that <laughs> 10 years ago they made this game that I love so much. Literally, when I was in, when I was a young kid, when I was like in grade 11 or whatever, I wasn't going through very good times. Like I was anorexic. I wasn't good. I almost died. And I think the only thing that kept me alive was New Vegas because I would just play New Vegas every day and just keep myself distracted with New Vegas. And it's such a, a, a large amount of... Oh, it gives me such good feelings that this game that I love so much has this community where people have been making content for 10 years it's and the content going, is like yeah. chef kiss good. There's, <laughs> this, there's this huge mod called, um, I talked to you about this before, called The Frontier. I don't know if That's the one that I've heard of, yeah. Yeah, so it's coming out in less than two weeks and it actually is like a full-sized Fallout game. They're just stapling on top of Fallout New Vegas. Yeah, that's that stuff is just crazy to me. Like Those people must... That's their job, obviously. I'm going to guess they have a Patreon or something or something to make that mod. Well, I think that the Frontier has been has literally been been being made for like eight years, Dan. That's wild. And I think that it's changed hands or something. And a lot of people have come <laughs> in and out of the project and stuff. But And they've had parts done for years that I've seen playthroughs of and parts that are, haven't been done for a long time that I haven't seen. But... It, just this huge labor of love that so many people have put their time in and no dan they are not getting paid for it at that's, all that's quite sad Get i don't think money. 
I don't think they're getting any money for it. But uh, well, we'll see when the game comes out. What I've seen so far has been really impressive, and I've really enjoyed it. But we'll see how good it is after. I'm sure there'll be good parts and bad parts, but just just the fact that it exists is fucking mind boggling to me. That, yeah. p- that people would put so much of their free time and so much of their effort and love into something for people to enjoy for free. Ugh, it's it's crazy, crazy town, <laughs> crazy it's, town. It's crazy, crazy times. I I am down to. I'm gonna bring up one more game real briefly that I liked a lot this year that I don't think got enough recognition in the slightest because I got it for like three bucks or four bucks or some shit. Uh, really briefly is Yoku's Island Express. I think so, you talked to me about that before. What is that? Yoku's Island Express is is a Metroidvania esque. You are you play as a dung beetle mailman on a tropical <laughs> island, and the game is centered around pinball. So it is a Metroidvania pinball game with a very colorful <laughs> area. <laughs> It's amazing, though. It did not get the love it deserved when it came out. I think it came out in 2019, and I swear if I'm remembering correctly, I got it for like three bucks on sale. And it's amazing. I 100% of that game. I got the secret ending. I got all the good stuff with it. And I don't love pinball, but the music in that game, the area in that game, the theme, the feel of everything, like everything in that game was very good. And I think you can get it for quite a few consoles now, and PC especially. But just get that game when it goes on sale or full price because I think it's only fifteen bucks. I'm gonna throw that. It's on my a very list. good game and gets a recommendation. Yeah, I'm gonna throw that on my wish list. Um, I think the last game I wanted to talk about quickly because yeah. I'm gonna list off a bunch of stuff at the end, and I'm sure you are too of stuff we've played that either we've talked about on the podcast before or it wasn't that good, or we're not gonna gush about it. But yeah, uh, that's what I want to talk about. The last game I played, the last one I would recommend is I've been playing these like i don't know if i've talked to you about them but they're called the dread x collection no i do not know what that is it is basically like a bunch of game jam games you know what a game jam is yeah yeah, yeah. so it's a bunch of games that people made in a short amount of time that uh, i think it's like 15 games each or whatever that they plop into one game and there's like a narrative around it and a puzzle around it to unlock the games and stuff but getting like i like a record on repeat i'm gonna say short experiences are great some of these games that i've played have been like my favorite experiences of the whole year um talking about the dread x collection 3 which is the one i've played recently there was a mini game there was a game that someone made that was like a mario 64-esque platformer and then you got to the end and you went into this like fucking cthulian uh like death sacrifice that you had to escape from as the and you skate back to your boat as the island is crashing around below you as this like huge elder god is trying to eat you it was so fun there's this other game where you are it's like a still frame like click game basically where you're interviewing this robot that's been taking off the line of this kid's entertainment place kind of five minute freddy's-esque plot but it was like you would ask these thing, this thing questions and you'd have to string together a bunch of words to make a question in order to get the ending that you wanted. And then finally at the end, like the whole game has been you watching this thing, uh, recording lines and trying to, to piece it together. And finally the antagonist bursts through the wall and you have to take control of your character you've not had control of before and escape the building before it kills you. They sound... Ins- I was just kind of looking at them on Steam on my phone. They look very, very interesting, and it looks like all the collections, each individual one's about 8 bucks right now. Yeah, so. they're they're cheap as fuck. And even if you don't like one of the games too much, like, there's definitely one that I didn't enjoy too much, just go on the next one. It's fine. Yeah. And, and you're like most of them. Yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, and, and they're all, like... There's this one where it's, like, a top-down perspective, and you're an astronaut. I think it's in Dread X Collection 2 or 1. And you're going along the surface of the moon and you're talking to this guy and you have to like, kind of like the game I talked about where you string things together. You're stringing, you're stringing reasons to not go insane uh, (laughs) into the spaceman's helmet so he doesn't go insane. And he goes down the staircase on the moon and finds an elder god and gets like chonked into his brain. It's very fun. I love those Game Jam games and especially small, small, small indie projects. Like not even indie released on Steam, indie released on like itch.io. Yeah. Yeah. Just because they're so interesting and usually have such... They might not be great, but such interesting, unique mechanics and premises that bigger studios don't want to take a chance at yeah. because it might not guarantee they print money for them. Well, that's why fucking yeah. Among Us got so big this year is that yeah, there was literally. a little premise that big studios don't want to try and then it fucking exploded because it went on mobile and people who don't like video games would play it right yeah it came out two years ago or something too just overnight explosion of popularity yeah 
Yeah, very interesting. But uh, I, briefly, yeah, I... Yeah, yeah, give me a list of games that you've enjoyed that you played this year, Dan. Just a short-ass bam-bam-bam list. Stuff that I liked that I played this year a lot that I don't want to dive into a bunch. Yeah. Uh, Disco Elysium, amazing game. You'd love it, too. I, It's perfect. You'd know if you like it if you look at a trailer for two seconds. Uh, I played A Hat in Time this year. I loved that as well. Uh, Plague Tale Innocence, really, really good narrative game. Yeah, uh, final been. boss fight sucks. It's horrible, but very good <laughs> game. <laughs> um, Gato Roboto is a very nice game, too. I'm saying very nice a lot, but all these games very are very nice. nice. Gato Roboto is a little Metroidvania game. You play as a cat in a mech suit that you have to res- rescue your master when his spaceship crashes. Very good little game. It's only a couple hours long, but I got all the endings and stuff and collected all the stuff. I play, We played Remnant from the Ashes, which yeah. is a nice game. Get it when it's on sale, because I don't love it, but it was get fun it when to play through. Get it when it's like under 10 bucks. <laughs> yeah, it was fun to play through. Uh, and then by my favorite developer, I played Pyre, yeah. which the same people that made Hades, made Bastion, made Transistor. Pyre is a sports game that is very, very good. A football good. game. Yeah, it's foot, football, soccer-esque. There's not really a sport to compare it to. But football. Again, amazing, absolutely fantastic experience. Great music, great narrative direction, great artwork, great voice acting. Uh, absolutely insane. But you, you go quick, and then I am down to talk about for a few minutes of games I didn't love this year. Okay, so Black Mesa, absolutely masterful remake of Half-Life 1. I beat Half-Life 1 this year on the PS2 port, and then I played this, and it feels like smooth fucking butter to play. It's so good. Doom 64, I played Doom 64 for the first time this year. It was so good, and I beat it. It was so good that I bought it for my N64, and I played <laughs> it with a fucking cro- clock controller, yeah? Dusk I've talked about a lot. Yes. Amazing fucking game great soundtrack great gameplay great level design uh, everything new blood makes is t- fucking gold the demos for Herat, i know i talked about it a lot yes, but I li- yes 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 that's coming out this month the first episode oh, really of Herat, h-r-o-t and it's su- such a good game that this guy made an engine for his game just from scratch and made a game for it it's like a fps shooter huh. it's so good iron fury amazing build game one of the the best build game i think next to blood so great the Long Dark, which is the most Canadian game I've ever played. <laughs> uh, very engaging storyline for the single player and stuff, and a very fun multiplayer survival-esque game. Yeah. Nightmare Reaper, I've talked about before. You've loved that game, yeah. I think I think it is my favorite game I've played this year that came out oh, really? in 2019, wow. 2020. Yeah, it is such a good game. Postal 2, I, I played Postal 2, and I, I didn't like it very much, but it's definitely one of those games where you have to take a step back and see if you're going to like it when you play it. Project Warlock was really good. Um, Spelunky 2, I enjoyed when I played it for 30 hours. Um, and the last one I'll talk about, I think, is Rainbow Six Siege, where I think I have a bad perspective of Rainbow Six because my friends only want to play the stupid... Not stupid, but they only want to play the Terrorist Hunt mode, which is fun. Oh, it's stupid but not for 50 hours i've really enjoyed this is my multiplayer game of this year i've really enjoyed jumping on with on on rank to just talking to random people you know getting our asses kicked going recruit (laughs) and just jumping into people's way and then trying to belly flop them basically very fun uh yeah that's my list of games that i enjoyed this year fantastic this this year has been filled with very good games uh some games i didn't love and i thought i'd like them a lot more uh, uh, immediately I'm going to start, and these games are all very good. These three games are very good games, and if you love them, if you're some of your favorite games, I fully get it, especially the first one I'm going to talk about. Uh, you just Fall, didn't enjoy them. Yeah, Fall Guys. Fall Guys is on my list marked in red, and it wasn't a very hard thought to me because I played it, and I liked it a lot for about eight hours, and then I haven't touched it in two months, and yeah. I watch people play it now, and it's like, this is... this didn't fall off because the gameplay hasn't changed but it's it, it, i think the problem with fall guys is that it's very simple and therefore yeah there's not a lot to master when you're playing it so. yeah it, it yeah. it's go in the right direction and jump at the right time there's not really anything to get better at and it's a good game and i understand if you've put hundreds and hundreds of hours in it i fully get it but definitely not the game for me that i really wanted from it and i don't think i don't think Devolver, i don't know if devolver digital makes it but they do publish it I don't know if they weren't making maps at a fast enough pace because it shouldn't. It didn't feel like it should be hard to make maps for that game, but it was a couple months before things really, really changed and new maps were added. But uh, yeah, 
Next game is Shadow Warrior 2. I really loved the first Shadow Warrior game. Like, the, the, not the first ju- game. Can I just say that this is the only game I have on my Game of the Year list that I didn't like? Shadow Warrior? Yeah, Shadow oh, Warrior really? 2. Oh, really? 2, yeah. I, I really like the first one, and I think you do too. Oh, yeah, I loved the first one. And this one was way more focused on co-op, way more focused on almost Borderlands-y-esque yes. weapons. This and, is this is yeah. the one one of two Steam refunds I did where I played it for really? a, oh, an yes, hour and a half. Oh yes, you did. I played it for an hour and a half, and I was I was like, "This is not fun. I am not no. liking the storyline, the characters yeah. in this one, or anything." So I am just going to refund it and say, "Better luck next time, guys." Like <laughs> yeah. this is just not my what I'm expecting. No, I I think they changed a lot of stuff for the worse, in my opinion. I'm sure it's fun if you play with friends, but it's not every. That's not an excuse because every game is fun if you play with friends, even shitty ones usually even remnant from the ashes <laughs> yeah like shadow warrior 2 added in a lot of stuff that wasn't in the first game to incentivize you to play with friends that wasn't good in my opinion and ha- micromanaged a lot and stopped gameplay a lot because you had to switch out weapons and figure out what weapon was the best for what and all the different weapon types and ammo i it, didn't it, love it. it it was a, it was a lot more complicated in a bad way than the first yeah because the first yeah. one is just like you jump in and if you're good enough at the game, you can get high ranked and stuff for the combat and stuff like that. And it's just fun to fucking slice through demons, man. Yeah. Um, very last one for me, and then we can uh, go. Cause it's a longer episode, but this is a good episode, I feel like. Uh, My Friend Pedro. I absol- This game has overwhelmingly positive reviews, and I thought I would like it so much. I did not like My Friend Pedro at all all it's published by devolver digital i forget exactly Again, who. yeah all the games you've talked about have been published by devolver digital oh god even shadow warrior 2 yeah no devolver i love you because i i you you published gris and gris is highlighted yeah. green i just didn't talk about it gris is an amazing game but uh yeah my friend pedro is like a twin sticky kind of shooter Hotline miami e yeah, I I don't know what it was. If it was the gameplay, maybe, or how it felt to move around, or the weapons, or something. I just did not like this game. From, like, the first level, I was like, this doesn't feel right. And then I was like, well, it ha- I think it's good. It has amazing reviews. And then I just kept playing it, and I forced myself to beat it. And I was like, this is just not, not having a good time with this one. I don't know what it was. I think it was just the feel of it. You didn't, I didn't feel fast or anything. And that looked very good from the trailer and stuff. Yeah, and I, I people obviously like it a lot, but it was not the game for me. <sighs> Ending on a dour note for episode, I'd love it. So <laughs> I think it, I think it's my pick for next week, correct? Yeah, hundred percent. I know what I'm you want to do. I think I'm gonna be boring, and I'm gonna pick another movie. Is that okay with you? Yeah, if you want to. I'm starting school, so I'll have time to watch it at night. I want to talk about the Fisher King. The Fisher King. I have no clue what that is. Yeah, it's one of my favorite movies. How old is it? uh the 90s i think 1991 yeah it's got ron williams and jeff bridges and people in it 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 is definitely it might be my favorite movie i want to talk about it yeah sure i will find a place to watch it and we can talk about that it's on netflix oh is it okay well i'll just watch it on there (laughs) so i think that's it for episode six of shack out back six yeah i have a very good episode a yearly roundup uh of games and whatnot um, yeah, I'd say take away, play some of the games we mentioned, definitely. Uh, yeah, it's about it. Definitely play Stardew Valley for 800 hours and never regret it. Yes. Uh, so how do you want to take us out here, Dan? I took us out uh, last week. What are you doing? Oh, God. Um, I'm going to read the board games I have on my shelf, and then you can okay. fade out. Okay? I'll fade out on it. Uh, left panel, Cosmic Encounter, Clank, Eldorado, Seasons, Eon End, Inish, Spirit Island, Tiny Towns, Dead of Winter, The Long Night, Wingspan, Roll for the Galaxy, Terraforming Mars, Horrified. Good night, darling. Goodbye, Jim. Bye-bye. Good night, Dan. Good night, everybody. We do want to test record right now, we're recording Jim's voice, yeah.